It was 1991, the first graphical MMORPGs had started to appear. Of course, this was before the term MMORPG had even been coined. Neverwinter Nights has dropped on AOL after climbing forth from the primordial soup known as multi-user dungeons, evolving past only text and now into 2D sprites and animations to show what kinds of activities your adventurer was undertaking. Simple in its scope, create character, assign stats, fight monsters, buy, sell and rest, but it did so much. This was a time when things were moving beyond pen and paper, beyond simple text. Now the imagination was transferring what people have been talking about and typing over to reality on our thick CRT monitors. A humble beginning for what would eventually become a titan genre amongst gaming. And the 90s was the time when many new and successful titles would release, including Lineage, Asheron's Call, EverQuest and more. What these games shared is that they took the idea of moving things from text to visuals and expanded upon Upon it, having open worlds, more ability to interact with players around you, a wider variety of enemies, taking the step from 2D to 3D and truly beginning to create online worlds where players could fully immerse themselves into. Coming into the 2000s is where things really began to take off on a worldwide scale for the MMORPG, with the previously mentioned Lineage and Ragnarok Online taking the East by storm, while the West was gripped by PvP-centric titles such as Dark Age Camelot and Ultima Online 2. Show me any thread about when MMO PvP was the best, and there will be somebody regaling you with the tales of Dark Age of Camelot, I can guarantee it. UK-based Jagex started a small game called RuneScape on a Flash browser, and EverQuest and Lineage got a sequel. By this time, the steps made by the games of the early 2000s have been ramped up significantly. Better interfaces, more detailed graphics, advanced character creation, bigger worlds with more to see and more to explore, and there was choice too. There was so much choice of what you could play at this point in time. And then in 2004, Blizzard Entertainment decided to move from RTS and have a go at this MMORPG thing that seemed to be pretty popular. Now for me, the first MMO I ever played was RuneScape 2. When I first logged on that and saw that you could fish a shrimp and burn it, make my own bronze dagger from scratch and shoot arrows at abnormally large rats, it blew my mind. I was running about in this world I knew nothing about as my very own creation, with dozens of stats to master and a map that I had no idea where it ended. I thought this is surely going to be the game for me forever. And then I saw that cinematic. That damned cinematic. What Blizzard pulled off in 2004 was just so far ahead of its time, it's absolutely unreal. I literally could not believe what I was seeing. The only problem being is not only did you have to buy the game, you actually had to sub as well. How did so many teenagers worldwide convince their parents to do this? I will never know. I know I certainly got my money's worth out of the level 20 trial, but the sheer success of WoW has cemented itself as a legend in gaming, and there was no shortage of attempts to recreate what Blizzard did back in 2004. Very few succeeded. You know what Blizzard has historically been good at doing? Taking something that's good and making it better, more accessible, more casual friendly. In 2004, World of Warcraft was a casual friendly MMO. In others, when you died, you would lose XP, levels. Sometimes you would have to go back to town and retrain your skills. What happens in WoW is your screen goes grey and you have to run for 8 to 10 minutes because why the hell is there only one graveyard in Ungoro Crater? Anyways, what WoW got right has been a format that has stuck. An MMO RPG template, if you will. Pick your race and class, do your quests, grind your levels. Lots of quests will be kill and collect. Different gear rarity, dungeons, you got some PvP, we have a little bit of PvE in there too. Micro menus with characters and stats, bag slots, and so on. The only real changes in other titles are how combat is handled, being action versus tab, player's point of view, top down or third person, and the long term progression path of horizontal versus vertical. Things haven't really moved on beyond this, they just look a lot prettier whilst you're doing your collect and kill quests with a bit of PvE and a bit of PvP. It's not to say that Blizzard innovated every single one of these gameplay characteristics, but they popularised it to the widest audience that's ever been seen. Of course, it's not hard to find internet rain dancers predicting the inevitable death and closure of the MMO giant. They have existed since the game has itself. Blizzard is also having a really good go at making people want to quit following allegations of overly thirsty employees in both sense of the word. And it wasn't just the quick cash grab knockoffs either that fell over too easily. Games such as Wildstar from Carbine and NCSoft, a game which was actively, and you bet they actively publicised it as being the labour of ex-vanilla devs, they were going to take us back to the hardcore raiding era, and they had a tagline, you aren't on Azeroth anymore, 
free to play after one year, closed a few later. But hold on, Final Fantasy XIV, that's the big deal nowadays, right? Ever since Blizzard has unloaded several magazines into their own foot, they have gradually risen to the top of the MMO market. First running out of digital copies to sell to the colossal influx of players. Notably, this wasn't even during a fresh expansion, it was just the sheer number of people who wanted to give something new a serious look, as well as the power of big streamers and media, giving that stream a very strong current. And more recently, with the launch of Endwalker, Square Enix have taken the somewhat predictable step of halting sales to aid the vastly overpopulated servers. Suffering from this much success as a matured, long-standing MMO is absolutely unheard of. And time and again when something like this happens or a new MMO releases, we once again have the phrase WoW Killer being popularized and thrown about. In fact, when brought up in an interview, Yoshi P didn't like the idea of Final Fantasy XIV being alluded to as the WoW Killer, saying both. WoW was the game we consistently looked up to. Our goal was to recreate a Final Fantasy version of WoW. So saying we won or lost to WoW is off base to start with, because they were the game we aspired to be. He also rebutted the idea that that they are now the best, saying, if I was that type of guy, we'd miss our footing on the way and 14 wouldn't be loved by so many people. The man's a class act. And for Final Fantasy XIV's success, it is a very recognizable MMORPG format. When I gave it a go, I found it very intuitive. Your tab combat, cash your spells, you get quests. If anything is significantly different, it's the volume of RPG or story which is absolutely unloaded upon you. Though it does make the transition from one popular MMO over to another that bit easier, which I'm sure is a benefit. And at this point in time, Final Fantasy XIV has totally exceeded expectations of creating their WoW, I think we can say that. But much like WoW in its current format, I think the building blocks are going to keep piling up on top of each other rather than us experiencing a totally new project, something fresh, something feels a bit next gen. Sometimes a game just defines a genre, it puts the building blocks there that will be the foundations of many to come, even to the point of the genre being named after the game that did so, roguelikes are so called because of the game Rogue from the 1980s. Metroidvania games are a combination of elements found in Metroid and Castlevania series, and if it's dark, gritty, and difficult, hey, we've got ourselves a Souls-like. And while we don't call MMORPGs WoW-likes, thankfully, a lot of them have certainly tried to be, and have stuck loosely to the format that had driven World of Warcraft's incredible success between 2004 and 10. Though very few have reached that peak, many have enjoyed enough success to sustain a stable game that has been enjoyed by many worldwide. So where do we go from here? What would be the next step? We went from imagination to pen and paper to multi-user dungeons to 2D sprites and basic animations. Then we went 3D, more choices, better UIs, more open worlds. Then we improved on that format tenfold. MMORPGs look incredible these days. But that sense of the past, the thing that's kind of deep rooted that's holding them back has always existed, such as collect, kill and quest. It's not that they should be removed, but iterated on somewhat. Something new and truly amazing. It will be a game that you could see going for years and staying strong. Being able to answer the interests of a variety of activities in the game. Having a world which is not static, but unpredictable and constantly changing. Your actions having real consequences to both you and others. To have a world which feels as though it's actually a breathing entity, where your character will be thrown or sidetracked into a number of different activities each day, without you having any clue what they'll be when you log in. It's not a small ask, but when was the last game where you would log in in the morning and then suddenly it's dark? There is currently one project that falls somewhere into this category, but it's a long, long way off, and of course that's Ashes of Creation. The fact that they are self-funded and published gives a lot of hope, and with their transparency and depth of in-game systems, even at this early stage, it shows a lot of promise, and I think it will, very importantly, take a self-funded project to truly pull off something next-gen. No big studio appears to be taking that risk, or if they are, they just aren't able to follow through on it enough. And this whole video isn't to say the entire MMORPG market is in an absolute state at the moment. In fact, I think it's been a while since there's been this many different MMOs which are worth your attention. If anything, WoW falling down somewhat has led players to discover that actually there are some alternatives out there, but nothing that I think will truly break the mold. Maybe it's not the genre isn't going anywhere. Nobody's really tried yet. Do let me know your thoughts down below, and as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening in, and I shall see you on the next one very soon.